as we all know that cloud environments are growing more complex by the day. I talk to a lot of folks and this is the story I hear again and again. And with that complexity comes rising costs, performance issues, and of course, operational headaches. But what if instead of relying on dashboards, alerts, and manual tuning, your cloud could run itself? It's more or less like self-driving cars. That is the vision behind self-driving cloud, and it's already here. Joining me today is Suresh Matthew, founder and CEO of Sedai, to explain what autonomous cloud management actually looks like, how it goes beyond traditional automation, and why it might be the safest and the smartest way to operate your cloud environment. Suresh, great to have you on the show. Thanks for having me, Sapna. It's my pleasure. And this is the first time I'm talking to you. So I'm also curious about the company a bit. Talk a bit about what is Sedai all about? What problem did you see which led to the creation of this company? So Sedai is an autonomous cloud management company. What that means is it runs your applications with the best availability, lowest cost, and the best performance or with the models that we have built. It takes human out of the equation those errors out of the equation. Now, why we built this? I was at PayPal for PayPal eBay for like 10 years, and that's where we saw this problem. The problem of managing a large cloud deployment with people and automation. That's when we figured out that we have to up-level the, the people tasks so they get to do things that are enjoyable and the mundane tasks, the firefights, look for opportunity to make things autonomous there. Uh, one of the big ideas that uh, you're talking about, or you know, when I look at Sedai, folks talk about is that uh, self-driving cloud or autonomous cloud management. Uh, first of all, what exactly is self-driving cloud or autonomous cloud management? And how does it go beyond the traditional automation tools, especially now when we have a lot of AI? There are like close to 100 companies that manage cloud today in the market. Right? And except for Sedai, everything else is automated. And the reason I say that is, if you look at Waymo as a car company, they are the autonomous car. They can drive the car without a driver. Right? The moment you put a driver in the driver's seat, you, you don't have a self-driving car. You have, you have a vision to be a self-driving car, right? So the moment you take the driver off the driver's seat, which means now safety is in your hands, if there's an accident that's on you, not on the driver because there is no driver, right? So that's exactly what Sedai does. When you change your cloud, when you manage your cloud with people clicking buttons or continuously optimizing also, the responsibility is on the human taking that decision. So in an autonomous system, it is the machine taking the decision. Whether to optimize, whether to restart, reboot, replace, scale up, scale down, all these operations are decided by the system. So automation plus decision making is autonomous. This decision making is where safety is super important there is no one else to guarantee safety you have to be the machines will have to make sure things are safe and that's why Sarai as a company has like nine patents making sure that the changes that we make in production is safe and we've done hundreds of thousands of operations in cloud for the largest companies in the world without a single incident now let's also talk about two things which folks are getting really really uh, concerned one is the cost Second is performance, optimization, better use of resources, because if you go into cloud, the, the clock is ticking, the meter is running, it doesn't matter whether you're, you're using a service or not, you will be charged for that. How does this self-driving cloud help in containing these uh, you know, challenges that organization businesses face today? Best way to look at that, Swapnil, is look at from the angle of an autonomous system, right? When a machine is driving, it looks at everything and it makes sure that there is no wastage. So it is not really trying to save money. It's really looking at all the parameters and saying, this is what you need to run this application. That's all you need. 
Now, when you remove wastage as a first class citizen, it becomes a cost saving action. So when it comes to cost, when you have an autonomous system, there is no way that the machine is wasting that money. So that's how Sadai is seen as a cloud cost saving company. Now, why Sadai is seen as a reliability company? Because generally when you drive or when you have a self-driving cloud, you will avoid all the accidents that's possible there. Right. If there is a problem, the metrics will tell you that there is going to be a problem. You have seen the traffic. You have seen all the golden signals. Now you can make those changes that will never run into a problem. So that's on the, on the availability side. The last, performance. Generally, there are four golden signals that Sarai relies on. Latency, errors, resource usage, and traffic. And latency is the one that tells us there is an opportunity for performance improvement. and if there's an opportunity and your, your preference says so, we will make that change. So in other words, to put in your pers in that perspective, engineers decide on the direction. They pick where to go, right? From place A to place B. Place B is always decided by engineers. Now, Sedai figures out how can I get there, right? So this is what they want. How can I get there? So the mundane task, the risky ones, the issue, the things that really bother them, will be done by the autonomous system. And you're precisely correct. There is absolutely no way you can replace people with, with AI. It's all about people doing the different things with AI. That's all. When organizations, when teams move to SIDI, what kind of difference experience they feel compared to the whole, we used to talk about single pane of glass, dashboards, alerts, uh, while they shift to this self-driving car or towards autonomous execution, what is the actual difference in their day-to-day -day operations? So let's talk about a large company where cloud cost is a concern or cloud availability is a concern. Generally, there'll be a team called a FinOps team and there'll be an engineering team. Typically, FinOps team would understand the cost inside out. And they will tell the engineering team that, you know what, these are the five opportunities for you to optimize. That's a general mode of operation. And when it becomes a high priority, this becomes a war. Right? So you have all these teams coming together, figuring out how stuff should be done, and then execute on the optimization. That's how generally it's done. With ZI, the whole task that, that's been done by these two teams the first set of things are already done by Sedai autonomously. Meaning when these teams come together, they have now very important 20% tasks where they have to really look at those changes and execute it. The 80%, which is like noise and, and like mundane tasks would already be done by Sedai. So if you look at the way the company is transformed, they now start looking at the 20% smart tasks, and they start enjoying those tasks. Your engineers are supposed to be builders. They are not supposed to do cleanup and, and optimization, right? That's Sedai's job. That's what we do. Can you walk us through a real world example where Sedai delivered a measurable impact for a customer, maybe in cost saving, performance gains, or incident reduction? Now, when we talk about cost saving, I really don't want to hear cost saving by laying off people or by firing people, we still need people. So I want to hear how how your customers see an impact when they move to Sedai. Yeah, never. We never had a case where we we. I mean, there there is there's no way you can remove people. I think it's. It, I, I think if someone is telling you or selling you something saying they can replace people, I am almost sure they're selling you snake oil. It is hard because there is a lot of intellect. And there's a lot of lot of certainty in how people take actions, right? And what we do as an example, I'll give you two examples. There was one, this is not a, a large company. This is probably a series C startup. They started seeing their applications running a lot smoother, faster, and they didn't know what was changed because the engineering team did not know that said I was deployed there. And the VP called me and asked, you know what, dude, I see a lot of changes. I see a lot of reactions from customers. What changed? And we said, you know what? We made a few changes and that is why your applications are running faster, smoother. And that was the first. The second one is probably the largest cybersecurity company in the world. 
right? So they deployed Sarai and we have done more than 100,000 operations in production for them with zero incidents. And that saved them in the first six months, $3.5 million. And this is all done with out people. Again, these are not the operations that people would be otherwise running into doing. So it's not replacing people. It's like making sure that they can work peacefully and they, they work peacefully on the things that they should be focusing on. No, and this is actually, uh, you hit on a nail that sometimes, especially in the whole, uh, with the cloud net era, we have put so many things in developers, you know, pipeline. We do talk about, you know, shift lab, all those things that we kind of forgot that what was the original job of developer, you know, to rise business application that adds more value. Or so now they are dealing with a lot of plumbing that should not be the case. So uh, your statement that letting developers focus on what they are meant to do with the organization versus taking care of these mundane tasks, that is the whole, you know, point of automation and AI. So thank you for reinforcing that view. Now, who would you consider your competitor in this space? And and before you name them, you can or cannot name them, what edge really you have over them, realistically, technologically? Yeah, this is probably the, most, the, the favorite topic for me, right? So there are like 100 companies. This is a very, this is a super crowded market. Right? And there are companies calling autonomy or themselves autonomous too. So that's the only difference between us and competitors. They call themselves autonomous. We are autonomous. And I'll tell you the difference, right? Let's take an example of, again, the Uber, Lyft versus Waymo. Right? Uber and Lyft, they take you from place A to place B. And if you look at the number of accidents in that process, would be a lot more, 88% more than Waymo. They don't have a driver in the car. The good thing is they are limited. They can only do a few things or uh, a few cities. But that limited action would be done safely. So that's the difference between us and competition. We are autonomous, meaning we take responsibility for the actions. There has been zero incidents so far ever with Sedai. And that is the guarantee that we provide that the rest of the competitions does not have. That's the only difference. Can you talk about uh, when we look at Sedai, are we looking at software? Are we looking at SaaS? What, and also, what kind of clouds do you support? We support all three clouds. In fact, now all four. We support technologies, not just Kubernetes or not just serverless, Kubernetes, general containers, serverless, VMs, and storage. So we support, we, we act as a platform for your cloud, not just for Kubernetes, not just for serverless. So we have wide coverage because we have an autonomous system and that can be placed on multiple technologies. So that's the difference. Typically from a usage standpoint, that's one critical difference that customers see with us. We are a platform that can optimize everything. In most cases, others are a platform that, op op that can optimize one or the other. Ba basically, it's a SaaS system, but we also let companies deploy as on-prem too, because there are security concerns, especially for machine learning systems. So we support on-prem as well, but we generally prefer SaaS. And the, the second aspect, how exactly are we considering or, or managing the PII aspect? So we don't read, read your logs. We don't read any PII. It's all based on metrics. So it's safe to have this machine learning system because it does not have access. What is your short term and long term goals? And also, how, what kind of impact? Because you folks predate a lot of, you know, these Gen AI technologies. What is the impact of Gen AI LLMs on Sedai as well? For our decisioning, we don't use LLMs. So we don't use, we don't use large language models for decisioning. So that is, that's outside. But LLM is heavily used by Sedai, one, for our own development. So that's definitely absolutely used. The second thing is there's an interface that can now developers can talk to Sedai with. And that interface is built on LLM. You can talk to Sedai as to what is your most expensive application? What is the application that's going down frequently, what was the release that spiked this cost, 
What was the release that causes instability? What is the check-in that is causing this problem? So all these questions can be asked and the SEDAI lens will answer those. What about security? If a lot of automation is being taken care by SEDAI, uh, how do you also ensure that you don't become uh, you know, attack vector or attack surface? The security is probably the most important thing or, or thing that we consider as a P0 for us. The reason we are secure is because we don't have access. We don't have access to the data, so we cannot be insecure. So we don't have access to the logs. We don't have access to any sensitive thing. So we just look at the metrics. That's one. Number two, you have controls on every autonomous, autonomous engine part where you want to turn knobs on or off. And when you see this, you can turn off and your security team has control on that. So we make sure that it is secure from a data perspective. And if it's on-prem, there is absolutely no attack. Suresh, thank you so much for joining me today. And of course, uh, great insights about Sudai and AI. And also I like some of your statements that you made in terms of because somebody moved to Sudai, that doesn't mean they have to use unnecessarily workforce. Uh, so that is not a job threat. You talk about security. You also talked about uh, while using AI, humans still have all the control there. So your view is very much pragmatic, not a lot of, you know, fluff that we hear when people talk about AI, Gen AI. Of course, you mentioned, you know, that you folks are not using LLM in that space as well, which is also great. So thank you so much for great insight. But I see a lot of work that you folks are doing is uh, very, very relevant. So I look forward to chatting with you again as you folks do a lot of new services, new features. So I I'm looking forward to a long collaboration, but I really appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you very much, Sapna.